All right, so not too long ago, I made a video about dating a racist. Yeah, it might have been slightly controversial. And the reason I referred to her as such is because she fetishized black men, which is a form of racism, it is. Because you objectify someone based off of aspects of their racial identity that go beyond just physical preference. Which led to a lot of angry motherfuckers in my comments who thought it might have just been preference and I was tripping because uh, it's a bit of a gray area, which is fairly understandable to be honest. So I promised a video on preferences. This is not that, I'm not I'm not doing that. Yet. So I figure I'd just give you guys another example of real fetishization, because it's something I know well. So we're gonna do this video in a much more Kurt Ritchie fashion. Why talk about when girls fetishize me when I could talk about when I fetishize girls? I fucking hate this channel, why do I do this? So by my own logic, I was being a racist. I am never getting a real job at this point. So how did I learn from experience? Well, we're gonna have to take this one all the way back to high school and then middle school and then back to high school. Does that make sense? No? All right, cool. Now, I discovered anime at a fairly young age. I, my dad put me on a speed racer like in middle school, which somehow turned into me watching normal big titty anime into high school. Sorry, Pop, uh, this is retroactively your fault. And during my high school anime watching phase around 14 or 15, I entered a particular span of life that a lot of fresh anime watchers enter. I became really enamored with Japanese lifestyle and culture. I even tried to learn Japanese on my own until I learned it was actually really hard. This is a phase that scientists and scholars often refer to as cringe. And usually from here with fans, I feel like there is a bit of a split in mindsets. You either A, simply like and appreciate Japanese culture and customs for what they are. You do a little bit of research on it. And then that's kind of it. You appreciate it, go back to your life. And then there's B, you now want to date a Japanese girl. Now this is a phase that scientists often refer as kind of a little racist. <laughs> Now, for some perspective, this isn't like the big boy, I hate black people racism. This is more like the, I wanna be friends with black people racism. Like you're kind of not getting the point either, but at least it's a positive, so we're on the right track. Oh my God, how do I sound? Kurt Ritchie, the only channel to say, not all racism is that bad. I really am not getting a real job after this. <laughs> now, as I said in the last video, this kind of behavior is fetishization, which is wanting to be with someone for the sole purpose of culture and stereotyping beyond physical preferences. Even though some physical preferences to an extent can lead to fetishization, but that's like a more gray line. And this phase really hit me, yo. It was like, I put these anime glasses on me that just made everything that was anime so much cooler. So my dumb adolescent brain who watched anime thought, I like anime. I like girls in the anime. The girls in the anime are Japanese. I want a Japanese girl. Holy f I sucked. Now, as a lot of y'all already know, I used to run track back in high school. And during practice one day, we're doing warm ups like usual. And while we're warming up, I see this new girl, which is weird because new people don't just show up during practice. She was a really cute girl with kind of short hair and a fairly athletic build. And she's Asian. Yo, none of my Asian friends are gonna f with me after this video, I swear to God. So now I'm down astronomical. And I asked one of my teammates, like, yo, who's uh, who's that over there? She knew? Oh, you didn't hear? That's Mikasa. She's a Japanese transfer student. Bruh. There is no f***ing way. There is a Japanese transfer student at our school, which is a common trope. In anime, I'm gonna lose it. This felt like like destiny. Like I was the bland protagonist, but the plot was just shining on me right now. Like I got isekai into another world, uh, which was my fetish. Like we were warming up, but the only thing I was trying to warm up was Mikasa, you know what I'm saying? You know? Now in high school, I was not really that great at talking to people. I feel like I don't have to prove to you guys, but there are some things that let you put aside the whole social anxiety thing, like horniness in anime. God, I hate this video. I hate this video so much. And day after day after day, I tried to warm up to her little by little. Which to be honest, should be the first sign that this was gonna go wrong. The fact that this deluded fantasy I had of being with an Asian girl coaxed me out of claiming up and admiring from afar and never talking to girls speaks volumes. So over the course of a week, I tried to talk to her little by little and to get to know her. Although usually failing, I tried, but eventually, I did. And let me tell you, 
Y'all ever have a memory that is like so utterly horrendous that you physically squirm when you think about it? Well, what's about to happen is so bad that I'm like seizing now in my chair. <sighs> and Naomi Casa herself was actually a really sweet girl. Very kind, honest, and shy, at least on initial glance. And when I first approached her, I wanted her to feel comfortable. I remember one of our first exchanges. In this exchange, will pretty much sum up how the whole relationship went. Rest in peace, any respect you had for me uh, prior to this moment. After speaking to me on and off for like a week or so, Mikasa greets me properly. Oh, actually, I don't think I ever got your name. I'm Mikasa. Oh, it's a pleasure to finally get to know your name, Mikasa. Chan. 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 If I'm being completely honest, I wish I had just thrown up on her. Cause I mean, this was pretty much the same. No matter what, what came out of my mouth would have felt wrong and disgusting. But at least if it was throw up, I would have felt better after it came out. Like nothing screams no pussy. Like calling a Japanese speaker Chan in America who was speaking perfect English. <laughs> but despite the weird air about everything, we continued talking somehow. I. <laughs> From there, over the course of a few weeks, I'd slowly tried to get to know her more and more outside of being really, really cringy. I don't know if we talk about a few topics, and to be honest, it wasn't like she was, like, especially cool. Like, we linked on certain things, but it wasn't like, oh, definitely wifey. But despite that, I was totally intending on making her wifey. I don't know what... I wasn't sure if I was really horny or if I was acting kind of racist. I recently learned those things are not mutually exclusive. <laughs> Anyways, one day after practice, we're talking, and the question I had been waiting for, for some time, finally gets brought up. She asked me if I liked anime. Now, part of me thinks she brought that up because she caught on to how much of a weeb I was based off our conversations, but I leap with the chance, bump it. Oh, definitely, I love anime, it's super sick. I proceed to ask her what her favorite is, and she goes, oh, I love One Piece. I own almost all the manga. And I'm like, oh, dude, I love One Piece too. This was the start, I felt it. Finally, we could bond over the medium that got me interested into the culture in the first place. I was really happy. I went home after practice, really excited to finally connect with this girl. I got in the door, sat down, looked at my phone, logged onto my favorite anime pirate site, and put on One Piece. Episode one. Because I had never seen a single episode of One Piece. <laughs> Yo, I mean, I had watched a couple episodes on four kids, and it was pretty eh. I mean, it's four kids, but it would be whatever because I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to watch the whole thing right now. So I lied, and I binge One Piece for a girl. <laughs> but I wasn't even really that into it, but somehow still was. It was weird. It was a weird time. I don't know, but having that realization, something just clicked for me. Like two weeks later, not at that exact same moment. It was like 1 a.m., and I'm on episode like 40 of One Piece, laying in my bed, and the episode ends, and I'm like... It's all right. Like, I'm not super hooked, but it's like, all right, man. <sighs> what am I doing? I like a sudden realization of sympathy. I looked at the state I was in, thinking, thinking, should I be doing this for me because I like the show or because I wanted an anime girlfriend? I feel like the answer is pretty f***ing obvious. Somehow the anime filtered glasses came off and that kind of was that. And from that point on, every once in a while, me and Mikasa would have our passing conversations. And Kind of what I saw change then too. I mean, she was fairly cute, but not like really my type. And her personality was cool, but not someone I'd want to be with like for real, for real. I mean, you ever just meet someone and be like, we'll just be acquaintances. That was that. Not to mention taking the glasses off made me realize she uh, definitely didn't like me. I could just tell. It was a weird moment, but I realized I was wildin'. And we just kind of stayed friends. She eventually left my school, moving away to another one, and we still kept very lightly in touch on socials. But I never told her this story. I hope she doesn't watch this. Please don't watch this. Now, wanting to have girls simply off of how they look and where they're from is inherently uh, messed up, except in one place. This video sponsor, Genshin Impact. Best transition yet, oh my god. If you don't know, Genshin Impact is an open world action RPG game available on PC, Android, iOS, and PlayStation 4 and 5. Step into a vast magical world now and start your adventures on the continent of Tavat, where seven kind of elemental powers surge. Genshin Impact now releases the new version 2.1, which includes new challenges, missions, and Watsumi Island. Now there are a lot of things in Genshin that I could use to wow you, okay? I could talk about its vast, immense open world. When I first got onto it, it really shocked me how beautiful it 
was. Well, whatever, who cares about that? I could talk to you about the cool combat system, how everyone has an elemental power, and those powers can be combined to make even more powerful attacks. You could talk about that. Could talk about how good the story is and how connectable the characters are. Trying to figure out the mysteries of this new world and who's who and who's on your side. But I know what we really need to talk about. All these hot anime waifus and husbandos, yo. Come on, y'all. There are so many amazing, cool, hot characters to have in the palm of your hand. Every character is so cool, radiant, has their own personality. And in the new update, there are a ton of dope new characters, including uh, the Raiden Shogun, who um would totally let step on me. She pulls a sword out of her titties come on y'all please check out the game and in fact you guys can play with me here's my id code trust me i be running through the streets it, it is a fun time so once again thank you genshin for sponsoring this video use my link in the description below to get genshin impact on your devices right now oh and if you're more into the visual novels and sexy men's side check out tears of themis mihoyo's other game once again thank you genshin for sponsoring this video here what's up y'all was good uh, thank you so much for watching that video um i've been sitting on this one for a while this is the day it's been record like edited and whatnot like it's uh, uh. some quick announcements yo one uh if you enjoyed that video uh please uh check out some of my others also please check out the streaming channel i'm streaming again um the link is in the description or my my channel's thing or if i'm lazy i did it also if you're going to anime nyc if you're not you should go um it's in late november and um i will be there on three different panels none for this channel <laughs> but um for recreo crunchy cast and um for for recreo crunchy cast is crunchy rolls podcast and uh beyond the bot which is getting the robot revamp so please pull up to anime nyc anyways uh, that's really all i got yeah that's all i got uh thank you so much for the patrons um and that's really all i got yo thank you so much and i'll catch you guys next time peace